answer the question we just posed, we will need to do financial forecasting, right? That's what we just talked about. And the first uh, financial statement we're going to be thinking about is the income statement. Okay, so now we're going to learn how to forecast an income statement, right? The model we're going to use is what we call a percentage of sales model. So in the percentage of sales model, all the key variables are going to be uh, uh, growing at the same rate as revenues, okay? So everything is going to remain a constant proportion of revenue with certain exceptions. There are some variables that we cannot use this assumption for other variables we can, okay? So that's what we're going to be talking about now. It's a very common forecasting model. Obviously, you know, it's not the only one, right? And it, it works better in some situations than others, but it's going to allow us to illustrate what it takes to, to forecast a financial, uh, a financial statement, in this case, the income statement, okay? So this is the income statement for PepsiCo. As we said, we're going to start with December 2014 financial statements, okay? So these were the audited numbers that PepsiCo reported at the end of the fiscal year in 2014, right? And then we're going to be thinking about what's going to happen next. As we go forward, right, what's going to happen to revenues, costs, and ultimately what's going to happen to the company's profitability, right? That's what we are uh, looking at. The income statement ultimately gives you information about profits. That's what we learned in module one. So we're going to be thinking about future profits, right? So, um, so how do we use this model, right? So we have here uh, our revenue forecast for 2015, right? As we, uh, as we uh, just talked about, we're going to use revenue growth rates from capital IQ, right? So for 2015, revenues are expected to grow at a negative rate. So PepsiCo revenues are actually going to decrease, right? So they're going to decrease from 66 billion, 66.7 billion to 63.7 billion, okay? You can check that this is a 4.4% decline, okay? And now the question is, what is going to be the cost in 2015, right? And I want you to, to think about that yourself and try to solve that, okay? So try to figure out what is going to be the forecast for cost of goods sold in 2015. So here is the answer, okay? So we start from revenue. The idea of this model is we start from, from the top of the income statement revenue and then we we use the same assumption to forecast the other items. So really what it boils down to is that COGS in 2015 is going to be growing at the same rate as revenue, right? So notice it's 4.4 here, 4.4 there, okay? So it's really very simple, right? The other way to think about it is that the, the company is going to keep the same uh, fraction, okay? So the, uh, here you have the uh, a fraction, you know, in 2014, COGS were uh, 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 30 billion, 30.9 billion dollars. Revenue were, were 66.7 billion dollars. So that is a fraction, right? And what's going to happen in 2015 is that the company PepsiCo is going to keep the same fraction of COGS, okay? So COGS is going to decrease to 29.5 billion, right? So that's the assumption we use. And, you know, of course, it's, it's more reasonable. It's, it's reasonable in some cases. It's less reasonable in other cases. But that's how you would use a percentage of sales model, right? So what we do is we go back in the income statement, okay? So you would go back here in the income statement and just, you know, using a spreadsheet, right? Or, uh, or, or you know, I, I, you, you will probably be doing this in a spreadsheet, right? It's not practical to, to forecast income statements on pencil and paper, but that's literally what you'll be doing is just writing the numbers, right? So you have revenue here, right, that we, we came up with and then you, you know, and then you keep forecasting the other numbers, right? So we, we figured out that COGS is going to be this value, right? SGNA, we're going to use the same assumption, right? They're going to be growing at the same rate of, as, as revenue. We are going to have the same fraction. It's the same thing. So you can check that that is the answer we're going to, to, to get. So SGA in 2015 is going to be 24.5 billion, okay? And now we come to this item, others, right? So I want to talk about this a little bit. In, in every real world financial statement, there are going to be items that we are not sure about, right? So what are these others? 
And in some cases, you can do additional research. In other cases, it might even be difficult to find out exactly what this item is. Okay? So think about, we're, uh, we, are, we are trying to forecast future financial statements, right? So the, the key question is, you know, what's going to happen in the future? Uh, is this item going to be a recurring item? Is it going to grow? Okay? So there are, there are several assumptions you could work with here. Okay? So a, a, a common assumption when you have these other items is just to assume that they are one-time items, okay? that they are non-recurring, and that you know, so whatever is happening in 2014 is not going to keep happening in future years. So that means you would just add a zero to this, to this line. Okay? So that's what, I, that's what we have here in this, in this uh, uh, slide. We have uh, other non-operating income. Okay? The question is, are they recurring items or they are, are they one time? Here we're going to assume that they are one-time items and that they're not going to happen again in future years. Again, of course, it's an assumption, right? Every time we forecast a financial statement, we are making assumptions. The assumptions could be more or, or less reasonable, you know, and it really is the job of the financial manager to try to come up with as, yeah, as good assumptions as, as possible, right? Then we have interest payments. When you think about interest payments, uh, it becomes, you know, it's, uh, it's very clear that we should not forecast interest uh, payments as a, uh, as, a, as a constant fraction of revenues, right? In, uh, the amount of interest that a company pays is going to depend on how much debt the company has, right? So PepsiCo in this case has $29 billion in uh, debt in 2014, okay? You can check the slide with the balance sheet is, that is coming up in a few slides, okay? So PepsiCo has $29 billion in, in debt. That means that your interest payment is going to be whatever interest rate you're paying times the amount of debt that you have. Okay? So if you do this calculation, assuming using our assumption, again, there is the important slide with all the assumptions we are using, right? Interest expenses is 4% of total debt. That means PepsiCo is going to be paying a 1.15 uh, uh, billion interest payment every year. Okay? And then we're going to assume a constant tax rate. So the tax rate is not going to change in future years. And really, these are all the assumptions we need to forecast the entire income statement. Okay? So here are some of the numbers that we, we wrote down ourselves. And we can do it for, for every, every little cell here. Okay? So here you have the interest, for example. right? Taxes, we are assuming a constant tax rate. right? And what that means is you can forecast all the items, right? With the other non-operating income, we are using the same assumption we used above, which is to set them to zero. So effectively, we are assuming that this is a one-time expense that is not going to happen again in the future, okay? So that is the answer. That is our forecast uh, of uh, PepsiCo's uh, future income statement.